From a very young age, I understood the principle of hard work. I understood that if I wanted something in my life, that I could go out and get it, that I had to go out and earn it. I had to go out and work for it. But as we all know, the principle of hard work doesn't mean success. We all know people who work hard but are miserable. We all know people who work hard but still are living with no direction and no purpose in their life. And so I knew that there was something that I was missing in my life. Sitting in that cubicle, depressed and miserable, I was working hard, but I was not successful. And so I knew that I was missing something. I knew that there was something more to life. I knew there was other success principles that I didn't yet understand that I was missing, that I had to discover and that I had to implement into my life in order to get to where I wanted to go, to become who I wanted to become, to offer to the world the gifts and skills and talents that I believe I possessed, but I just didn't know how to express them. I didn't know how to dig them out of myself yet. I wanna share with you three principles that I believe will absolutely transform your life. Because these principles, they helped me get back on track uh, in my life when I needed them most. I believe that they can transform you. If you're not where you want to be, uh, maybe you're not in the kind of job, the kind of career that you thought you'd be. Maybe you're not in the kind of uh, moment in time in your life that you thought you would be by this point in your life. Maybe some obstacles, some circumstances, some things in your life have happened that have put you in a position to where you're not where you want to be in life. And so I believe these principles uh, can help equip you. Uh, they can be like that toolbox that you can go to to help you get back on track and stay on track and become the kind of person that you can become. These three principles that I'm gonna share, the first one is to develop a burning desire. The second one then is to take action. And then the third principle is always persist. With that, we'll start with principle number one. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to develop a burning desire. Now, it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. It doesn't matter what kind of obstacles you're facing. It doesn't matter how many times you failed in the past. It doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter how many things you have to overcome. If you have a burning desire in your heart to do something great with your life, to not just be a person who just flows through this life, but actually impacts people, goes out there and does incredible things, has incredible impact on the world, has incredible impact on your family, on your community, on people around you, you have to have something to fight for. If I ask you right now, do you want to be successful? As a matter of fact, if I stop 100 people on the street and I ask them, do you want to be successful? You know, chances are every single one of these people are going to tell me, yes, they want to be successful. Now, if I ask them, what does success look like to you specifically? I don't know if everyone will be able to tell me that. See, a lot of people, they love to talk big. They love to talk about wanting to succeed, talking about doing great things, but they don't have clarity. They don't know what that looks like to them specifically and develop a burning desire. You can't fight for things in your life when you don't know specifically what it is that you're fighting for. And for me, I had to discover that. I come from a family of fighters. I come from a family of people who live with purpose and despite the circumstances that they face in life, they still live with so much purpose and impact to so many people. And yet there I was living in America, working in this dead end job, depressed and miserable. And so I knew that I needed that passion in my life. I knew that I needed to find something to fight for. And that's where a man named Ogmandino came into my life. And by came into my life, I don't mean that I physically met him. I wish I did. But I, I picked up a book called A Better Way to Live, written by Ogmandino. And this book changed everything for me. It changed my perspective on life, changed my outlook on life. It reminded me that I too had something to offer, that I too could go out and do incredible things with my life. Ogmandino was an author and Ogmandino was a motivational speaker. So I decided then and there after reading that book that that's what I was gonna do. Slight problem, I was not an author and I was by no means comfortable with speaking. So I was terrified of speaking. And this book started giving me ideas and perspectives and outlooks on my life. And so I wanted to do for other people what Ogmandino did for me. And suddenly I had my burning desire. I knew what I needed to do. I needed to write books and I needed to speak. That's the power of a burning desire. You're not gonna know sometimes how you're gonna achieve your goal. You're not gonna know what you need to do. You're not gonna see the opportunities in your life. But if you have that goal, if you have that burning desire to achieve something, you have that clarity of a goal in mind, you're gonna start to figure it out. That's the beautiful thing about life is that when you start to look, when you feel like there's something different, when you want something more, life has a way of presenting you an opportunity to get more. Sometimes that opportunity can come in the form of an obstacle. Sometimes it comes in the form of an opportunity of meeting somebody. And for me, that came in the form of a book. Principle number two, now you've got to take action. Once you've developed a burning desire, you've got to do something with it, right? You've got to do something about it and you've got to take action. 
Maybe you've just been afraid. Maybe you just haven't felt qualified to do it. Maybe you've been spending too much time looking around at what other people have, the opportunities, the gifts, the skills, the talents, the abilities that everyone else around you has. And you know, the more we compare, the more it feels like we have less, right? The more we see what everyone else has, the more it feels like we have less. But my friend, you've got to take action because you cannot gain confidence in yourself. You cannot discover the skills, the gifts, the talents that you have inside of you if you haven't even started working on them. If you haven't started taking action, if you haven't been trying different things, if you haven't been putting yourself out there, right? It's okay to be scared. It's not okay to stay that way. It's not okay to not try. It's not okay to let that fear keep you beat down and staying in the same place. And so that's why this second principle is so important. It's one of the most easiest principles to understand for people. And yet it's still the one that keeps people down the most because people don't implement that into your life. When I was 17 years old, my brothers and I, we were headed to a wedding and we got into a little bit of a road rage with this absolute maniac lady on the freeway. This lady decided she wanted us off the freeway. She's getting in front of us, she's stopping, you know, she's brake checking us, she's stopping the car and we're trying to go around her. And at one point, my brother decides, we gotta get rid of this lady. Like we gotta get away from her. So he steps on the gas and we start going about 80 miles an hour down the freeway and we're going down the fast lane. And this lady, she catches up to us. She swerves across three lanes of traffic. She swerves her SUV, clips the back of my brother's car. The entire car spins around, back left tire snaps off, and we start rolling down the freeway. I'm unbuckled in the back seat the entire time. The car finally comes to a stop. All three of us crawled out of that car, and I, to this day, I don't know how it happened. It was a miracle. I don't know how it happened, but all three of us crawled out without a single scratch on us. I remember an ambulance lady pulls up. She takes one look at the car. She called us golden boys. She said, nobody should have came out of that car alive. That got me thinking about my life a little bit differently. When you're young, you think you're gonna live forever. And it was that moment, at that moment, that I realized that my life could have ended in an instant. It was the first time in my life that I finally realized that I wasn't gonna live forever that the way that I was living, the opportunities that I had in my life, that they weren't gonna be there forever. How often do we read a book, we hear a song, we watch a movie, something triggers, something inspires us, something gives us an idea. We have that burning desire, we have that idea to change, to do something, to wanna do something bigger with our life. But because we don't take action, because we don't implement, that emotion eventually it fades away. See, motivation is a good thing. Motivation is meant to be that spark, meant to be that jolt, but then it's gotta be followed by action. Motivation's gotta lead you to do something. And that's where this principle comes in. And this brings us to principle number three, always persist. My friend, it's not gonna be easy. The bigger the goal, the bigger the destination, the bigger the vision, the bigger the dream, the longer it's gonna take for you to get there. The more obstacles you're gonna face in your life to achieve that goal. You might be someone who's already developed a burning desire. You might be somebody who knows exactly where you're headed. You might be somebody who's even started taking action. And yet the obstacles that we face along the way, the words of other people, the circumstances that we face, you know, the pandemics, the things that come to us in our life that throw us off track, that disrupt us, that cause just moments of distraction in our life, they stop us dead in our tracks. And this is where most people stop. I believe that the difference between people who achieve extraordinary things in their life and people who don't, it's not that people who are doing extraordinary things out there are smarter than you or more talented or more skilled. There's just people who didn't quit somewhere along the way, who picked up those talents, who picked up those skills, who continue to fight, even though they faced the obstacles along the way. Don't quit, there's gonna be distraction. We're living in a world right now of a lot of distraction. We got Netflix, we got small-minded thinking friends, we got social media, we have all these distractions. And what happens is when we face an obstacle in our life, what does our brain do? It starts to find a way to distract ourselves, right? It starts to find an easy way out. We start to spend a little bit more time on social media. When we have a big project coming up, we have something that's scary, something that's tough coming up. We just find a way to spend our time doing something else. So I'm asking you, my friends, don't quit. Stop tapping out. Stop going for these distractions. If you keep that dream at the forefront of your mind, you're gonna have the ability to persist. One of the most incredible things I learned about this life is each of us have gifts and talents inside of us. And a lot of us, they're buried somewhere deep down. So my question for you is, what do you have to do to go out into your personal desert and pull those talents out? Dig them out. Inside of you right now are 700 muscles attached to 200 bones that allow you to stand up and walk around. You have uh, two gallons of life-given blood that pumps through uh, 12,000 miles of blood vessels that run from your toes all the way to your fingertips by a heart that beats 35 million times per year. 
You have three pounds of great brain matter in your head that produces thoughts which could be measured on an electromagnetic device. You have 17 muscles in your face that allow you to smile, and every time you smile, you release healing endorphins through your uh, entire body. You have eyes that subconsciously detect emotion on another person's face, allow you to feel what they feel and cry when you see them cry because of something called mirror neurons. You have lungs that expand into 20,000 breaths per day, keeping you alive without you ever needing to remind them to. You see, my friends, everything inside of you is fighting to keep you alive. The least you can do is start living.